Well, welcome to the first video in the second topic, topic five for the, uh, for the natural channels module. Um, topic five is about fluvial processes, and in this first video, we're going to talk about reach characterization and stream power. We'll start off by talking about catchment context, then we'll talk about river form, stream power, and stream classification and stability. So, in the previous topic, we talked about um, the sediment characteristics and how to um, uh, sample sediments within stream reaches. Now, focus was very much at that reach scale. What we have to realize um, when, we, when we go out to visit a stream, a stream site, a, a single reach, that that reach has a context. The context is its catchment upstream. And the characteristics of that reach and changes in that char those characteristics is a function of the key drivers from the river's catchment. And in particular, the stream flow, the volume of water delivered to that reach, and the sediment that's delivered to that reach from the upstream catchment. A useful framework to think about this catchment concept, um, context is the, the fluvial system concept uh, introduced by Stanley Schum in 1977. And he defined within a catchment three distinct zones. Firstly, there's uh, zone one, the headwater zone um, or upland zone which is the sediment production zone. In this area, streams are eroding into the surrounding material and supplying sediment to the river channel network. The second zone is the is zone two, is the sediment transfer zone. This is where sediment is supplied from the upstream and it's passed on downstream without much change in the total sediment load, the amount of sediment transported within the channel um, through that reach. And then we have the third zone, the deposition zone, where sediment is generally deposited um, on the floodplain or along the channel. So it's generally a low gradient um, uh, river zone. And we can place that um, river reach that we were looking at on the previous slide within, this, um, within the fluvial system. In fact, you should recognize this reach. It's, it's the old Thompson River from your um, project assignment from the first module and, and this module. And that sits within zone two, the sediment transfer zone. It's typically a gravel bed river, there's mobile sediments um, and so on. And here we have the, um, a, a, an example of a river reach from the zone one, the sediment production zone. It's a bedrock river. So if we look in the, in the, in the bed of the channel, we see that the, the bed of the channel is made up of the bedrock material. It's not mobile um, sediments transported by the river. It's the actually underlying geology which determines the characteristic of the river channel in that case. Further downstream within this uh, upland um, sediment production zone, we can get some mobile sediments delivered from the upstream um, rivers, or it could simply be sediments um, delivered from the, the, the valley walls along the river channel, but we also still do get bedrock in, in the bed of the channel. And down in this lowland section, the deposition zone, we have these sort of typical low gradient rivers where we have sand and silty stream um, sediment loads. Um, we have wide floodplains um, and, low, and low velocities for the flow within the channel. The next thing we might think about when we're trying to characterize our, our rivers or our river reefs is to think about the channel plan form pattern. And there are three um, key types of pattern that we can observe. The first is a straight river plan form, and here we can see the lower Snowy River in eastern Victoria, um, and this is a particularly straight section of river as it emerges from the um, upland section down onto the lowland riverine plains. It's about five or five kilometers long or so, this river is about 100 meters wide and exceedingly straight. The second type we can have, the second plan form pattern, is a meandering plan pattern. This is the, uh, the mid Goulburn River um, just downstream of Lake Hilden. Um, and we can see the river course flowing um, across the northern side of the floodplain here uh, and meandering along with a certain degree of what's called sinuosity. Um, sinuosity uh, uh, is in fact de defined as a quantitative um, measure. It's the ratio of the length of the, um, the river channel itself to the valley length, so the length straight down the valley. And that can be up, um, be two or, or more, i.e. The, the channel length can be twice the length of the valley. And finally, uh, we can have um, a braided uh, river 
a channel where we have multiple um, flowing, uh, flowing water um, channels across this, um, this sort of main broad uh, alluvial channel bed, um, which tend to be quite mobile. They, they connect and divert, divert and so on um, down through the channel. Uh, this is in fact is from New Zealand. It's hard to find braided river channels within Australia, but they're generally found in rivers with a high sediment load and Australian rivers generally have quite a low, um, a low sediment load, at least a low bed load. The next thing we might think about when trying to characterise our river is the cross-sectional channel form. And uh, importantly, we start by defining a, a bank full channel level. So we can see the top of the bank uh, here um, on this left bank here and over here on the right bank. And we can draw a line between those two levels, the bank full uh, water level, and define the bank full channel width and the bank full channel depth at that point. And if we know what the Manning's roughness coefficient is and the gradient of the channel is and the, uh, the shape of the cross section, we can also calculate the bank full discharge using Manning's equation. These three variables, the bank full width, the bank full depth and the bank full discharge, can be related to each other using these empirical relationships called the hydraulic geometry equations, or more specifically, the downstream hydraulic geometry equations. And so here we have bank full width, bank full depth, uh, and also stream gradient as a function of the bank full discharge, Q, and the median particle size, D50. Uh, and these power functions are generally fitted uh, by log-log regression to observations of width, depth, discharge, and slope. Um, in, um, in streams from a particular region, and they tend to be quite specific to that region. Now there's a, a, a very large number of river classification methods which have been developed, which describe, which are based on either the form or the function of the river channel. And this is a fairly simple one, also developed by Stan Chum in 1977, um, which is quite useful. It defines, divides the rivers up into three um, types based on their, uh, the mode of sediment transport from a suspended load stream, a bed load stream, or a mixed load, um, is some sort of mixture of suspended and, and bed load. Um, I'm just going to talk about the suspended load and the bed load um, um, cases to simplify um, in this case. Now the, the M factor is the proportion of clays in the bank of the channel. In these suspended load channels, you tend to have a high proportion of clays in the bank, that's greater than 20%. In the bed load, you have a very low proportion of clays. That means the, the banks are more erosion resistant in these suspended load streams. Clays are cohesive, so it promotes erosion resistance. Now, there's a further division in terms of stream types between a stable stream Streams that are grading, that means there's ex excess sediment delivered to the reach which is being deposited within the reach and the reach is contracting, so the river channel is, cross section is contracting. And then we have a degrading um, uh, case where in fact there's erosion occurring along the river reach and the, and the cross section is enlarging. In the case of the stable channel for the suspended load stream, typically we find um, width to depth ratios, that's the bankful width, the bankful depth ratio of less than 10. The sinuosity, and now remember that's the river channel length to the valley length ratio, is greater than 2, uh, and the gradients can be relatively gentle. In the bed load case, um, the width to depth ratio can be greater than 40, so significantly wider than this is in the suspended load um, case. The sinuosities are quite low, less than 1.3, so relatively straight channels, and they're relatively steep compared to the suspended load case. Now when we're thinking about the aggrading um, case, the, the example where these, these rivers are um, accumulating sediment, the question we ask is, where is the sediment being accumulated? Is it on the bed of the channel, or is it on the banks? Now in the case of the suspended load channel, the sediment's being carried in suspension, so it's somewhere in the water column and it tends to deposit out on the banks and so, this, so the, um, the, the channel narrows gradually through time as that sediment accumulates on the banks. In the case of the bed load example, the sediment's been carried along the bed um, and we get the deposition on, on the bed of the stream. And so we get an aggrading channel which means the bed level 
is increasing, is rising, and the channel depth is decreasing. In the degrading case where we're getting erosion, the question then is, where is that erosion occurring? Is it on the banks or is it on the bed of the river? Now for the suspended load stream, remember that the clay content uh, in the banks is higher, so they're relatively erosion resistant. So the erosion tends to be of the bed, and so we get bed degradation, erosion and the channel depth increases. In the bed load case, um, the erosion tends to be of the banks because the banks are, are less erosion resistant in the suspended load case and you get channel widening.